The Len Evans tutorial is notorious for being one of the most difficult wine scholarship programs to gain a position in globally. And after years of trying, I finally got into the 2022 class, the 20th anniversary of the tutorial. It all started in 2001 when Len Evans, at that time in his early 70s, pulled together a group of friends and sponsors to create a not-for-profit wine scholarship program with the goal of educating Australia's greatest wine minds, whether it be wine makers, wine writers, uh, sommeliers and others, educating those guys by showing them the greatest wines in the world in the hopes that that experience and knowledge could then be passed on and improve the breed of Australian wine. Um, we can take that back to the show system, to judging, to writing, to winemaking, the whole bit. So a really, really important expansive program for Australian wine um, and one that has continued for 20 years since. I filmed a video right as I returned back home um, and the content was over two hours long. Now, it's too much for the regular person. There's too much detail. It's too nerdy. I went into um, extreme length about the notes that I took, um, the classes that we had, the feedback that I got, uh, and it may just be too much for you guys. So this is sort of what it looks like. I fit a lot onto those pages. And if you would like to see that long format video, hang around to the end and I'll tell you how you can access it. So I'm going to explain to you a number of things, the structure of the week, how the scoring works, judging, masterclasses, dinner, DRC, and then I'm going to talk to you about, in retrospect, what I learnt, what advice I was given, and as I say at the very end, I'll tell you how to access that long format video if you're thinking of applying or you're just keen to see how deeply nerdy the week was. The structure of the week. So we arrive on the Sunday evening, we have a welcome dinner and judging starts on the Monday. So we do judging in the morning, followed by masterclasses and a dinner in the evening. And that format sort of follows throughout the week. There was one day where we did two judging sessions and no masterclass, um, but every day ended in these incredible dinners uh, with lots of old wines, all of it served blind. Scoring. So the scoring uh, system is put in place in order to determine the ducks at the end of the week. One person walks away with ducks, 11 people walk away without ducks. You have to make sure that you're comfortable with not winning ducks before you go there because there's a really good chance that you won't be that number one. The scoring works like this, as far as I can see. So we all taste the wines. Uh, we walk into the room, you taste the wines that are on the table and you judge them just like at a wine show and you write down your notes and your score. The panel sits at the front of the room and they also do the same. They judge the wines as well and then they go away and they come up with a score that unites the panel. So they have one uh, number versus the rest of you. There's 12 different scores in the room. And then we go around the room and we talk about what our numbers were. So I was sitting at the front right corner, which meant that from the panel's perspective, I was front left and I was always the one to start out in the mornings, which is quite stressful because you don't know what other people are going to call out. So you call out your score, everyone calls out the score, the, the tutors note down your score and then they say, we were a 95 on that one or we were 90 on that one or we were 96 or 80, <laughs> which happened on one day. Um, and then you discuss the virtues of the wine. So they'll ask a couple of people to say, you know, Erin, you gave it 95 points. Why did you give it 95 points, etc.? There is a penalty for deviating from the panel score. So up to two scores above or below is no penalty. Um, if you hit it on the nose, that's best. Uh, and if you deviate medals, i.e. a gold medal for the panel and a silver medal for you, that counts as a penalty as well. So in the longer format video, I talk about my top wines from each of the judging sessions. I talk about my deviations from the panel. So penalties, no penalties, bullseye, golds, all of that stuff. Um, I'm pretty open about some of the clangers that I made and some of the wins as well, so it, it is worth a listen if you're, if you're that way inclined. Judging. I have explained a little bit about how it goes, but in terms of the content, you look at 30 wines um, of one variety. So we did um, Chardonnay, Shiraz, Riesling, Cabernet and Pinot Noir, and the brackets are constructed with international wines. So it's, it's a pretty amazing um, expose of the best wines of the variety from around the world. Um, it starts with the um, older wines for 
the reds first, you start with the oldest first and you end in the youngest, and with the whites it's in reverse, so you start with the oldest, uh, the youngest and you move into the oldest. Um, it can be really challenging because for every variety you're looking for different um, pitfalls, you're, there's different kind of um, things to be careful of. At the beginning of every judging class, the tutors gave us a rundown on the variety, so I'll read to you just quickly the Cabernet so you can understand a little bit about the direction we we're given. So we were told to look out for water-based versus alcohol-based tannins, um, tension between sweet and savoury, De tannins um, as defining quality of the wine, wine style versus variety, mid-palate flesh comes from the vineyard, we're looking for aromatic and herbal versus herbaceous. So these are some of the things that we discuss openly. There are questions if you want to ask them at the beginning and then you dive into an hour and a half of silent judging and then we talk about the wines and that's where you get your scores at the end and you can sort of see how well or horrendously you have performed on that day. Masterclasses. So these are done in the afternoon and are not judged they don't count towards the duck score at the end of the week. Um, they are hosted by an expert in the in the variety. So, for example, we did a two champagne masterclasses, Prestige Champagne and Terroir Champagne, um, hosted by Tyson Steltzer, who visits the region several times a year and has got an encyclopedic knowledge of both the region and the wines. So that was a really fascinating kind of way to spend the afternoon. You get given the list of wines before you go in, so there's nothing blind. You're not trying to pin tails on donkeys or anything like that. You're literally just looking at the wine. You know what it is. You're learning from the tutor about it and about it in context. So we did that for Cabernet with Vanya Cullen, Champagne with Tyson Steltzer. We had Michael Hill Smith, MW, take us through the Australian Chardonnay context, which was fascinating. We did Burgundy with Tom Carson and Philip Rich. A really, really amazing way to look at a variety or a region in context and discuss it openly. You know, it's a really meeting of minds sort of sort of time. It was really exciting. The dinners. Now I have a swathe of photos. I took a single photo of every single wine that we drank at all of the dinners. And I'm gonna put some of them up in this video for you to have a look at now. The dinners are um, now not counting necessarily towards the ducks. Uh, calculation at the end of the week. These are meant to be interesting, appreciated, precious times to drink these beautiful wines. And in many cases, these wines will be the very, very last bottles of the style. Uh, we looked at some very old Australian wines, which for me were the most humbling and most exciting part of the dinners. Um, this really is our Venus history. So to be able to look at these wines 40, 50, 60 years on and see how they're faring in the context of when they were made is just... Um, as I say, humbling and fascinating as well and very instructive for me as a wine critic going forward, especially with Australia being my, my main area of focus. We looked at some very old fortified wines, sweet wines, like Prestige Cuvée Champagnes. We look at, you know, Burgundy, Chablis. There was some Italian wine in there, which um, was few and far between, but most appreciated. Uh, plenty of Bordeaux, of course. Really amazing dinners. And, you know, we each as wine lovers have been to great dinners, but to do four in a row um, that are just stupendous lineups is just almost, it almost defies belief. So um, I have got those photos in there. You will see some of them now. Um, and there are certainly lots of those um, at the end of the week with the video link that I'm gonna to give to you if you want it um, for the extended version. There's plenty of discussion around the wines then. DRC. So we had many bottles of DRC throughout the week ensconced within either the dinners or masterclasses. But on the final day, and this is probably the most famous part of the, the Len Evans tutorial, there is a horizontal tasting of a single vintage of each of the vineyards from DRC. So we looked at the 2014 vintage. You don't know what vintage you've got in front of you. You have to work that out. A little bit of that is deduction from years that have gone previous to you, and you can find all of that information out on the Len Evans tutorial website. But at the end of the day, you really just have to look at what's in the glass and make a decision based on what you can see and feel and smell. Um, looking at those seven wines side by side, I mean, there, there aren't many people, wine critics probably are the, are the people that taste these wines like that, very wealthy people every year, but the regular person doesn't get to see seven DRCs side by side. And so the thread of magic that's woven into those wines really can't be overstated. Um, they are magical wines. They are very special. They did have um, 
little flecks of rusticity perhaps is a nice diplomatic way of saying it, but they were unbelievable wines. Benchmark perfection, really. Um, and if you ever get the opportunity to look at more than one vintage, not more than one vineyard side by side, I definitely recommend it. It's really special. So in retrospect, a challenging thing to um, pitch forward towards when you don't have the benefit of hindsight. I was given some advice before I went in and that was, don't worry about ducks. Just enjoy yourself. This is the most fantastic week of wine that you're ever going to have. Just enjoy it. So many people told me that and I went in thinking this is the most important thing to do is to enjoy the week, enjoy the week, enjoy the week. The fact is it's very intense because there's lots of competition. I really cared for all of my um, fellow scholars. These guys were a bunch of legends. And so while you celebrate all of their wins, you know, go around the room talking about wines and you hear them and you're like, they nailed that, they nailed that. That's kind of really exciting, but you know that those wins for them are losses for you. So it's a bit of sweet tension. There's push and pull, like all good Cabernet is sweet and savoury. And so what I wish, going back, if I could do it again, I'd be so much better at this if I could do it again, and that's what everyone else says, just enjoy it. Because like I said at the very beginning of this video, only one person walks away with ducks, 11 of you don't. And if you have even a scrap of respect for the other people that you're in the class with, you will see that great, honourable, knowledgeable, observant, skilled, precise people don't get ducks. And that's something that you just have to remember. It's just one person. So in our year, Andrea Pritzker, MW, won ducks. She performed brilliantly all week and gets to go on a business class trip to Europe to all of the great domains. So lucky her. Um, we had a exceptional week, um, very tense, very exciting. And on reflection, I just wish I could do it again. So if you're thinking of applying uh, I couldn't recommend it more highly as a wine lover, as a wine professional. It's so expansive and it's not just the wines that you taste. It's not just the people that you meet in the tutorial, but it's the tutors that give their information freely. They give their knowledge freely to you. You ask a question, they tell you the answer and it's stuff that you can't get from books. It's, it's really priceless. So how to get hold of this longer video if you want it. I go through um, at least my top five or six wines from each of the judging sections. I tell you what my scores were. I tell you what the panel score were and was and what that deviation was. I also talk about my penalties, no penalties and bullseye notes, um, bullseye points throughout the week. So you can really see how I um, performed I guess in a little bit of detail maybe that will help you if you're doing your application and you just want to get a little bit more of a feel for how it's going to go. Um, I also talk about some of the dinner wines in more detail that was just a really um, spiritually special part of the week for me looking at those wines side by side is pretty awesome. Um, I'm going to send an email out to my database you can get onto my database if you wish on my website, www.erinlarkin.com.au, at the very bottom of the front page is a, a mailing list sign up. If you get on there, I will send out the EDM and I'm going to just put a little link in the bottom with the unlisted video on YouTube so that you can watch it and have a look at it in detail. As always, thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. And uh, life is short. Drink great wine at any possible juncture. If you can't find great wine, drink some water. It's good for you.